Hey, how's it going? Welcome to today's vlog. We're going to be checking out some gear on Reverb, and we're going to be talking about just some stuff that I've been up to this week. A big part of my week has been spent writing custom songs for people. You can check out my profile on songfinch.com, and I write songs, I record them, and produce them, and all based on a custom relationship story uh, for an anniversary or something like that. And so uh, definitely check my profile out on Songfinch. Um, so that's taken up a good portion of the week. I've also been woodshedding through the NAM set. Um, I'm really excited about playing NAM. This is also the first time that my trio has performed uh, in well over two years. So we're working out some new original material, some stuff that's gonna be on my album, and then some of our older songs. So I'm really excited about that, but also wanna make sure I'm bringing my A-game, uh, you know, playing at NAM. I'm also sitting in with a band uh, on the other end of this weekend. So we're headed towards uh, Memorial Day weekend. I'm gonna spend some time uh, out on the river floating and, and not thinking about music or guitar or work in any way. Um, I'm really excited about that. But as soon as I get back, I'm sitting in with a band for kind of an obscure gig. So I've got to um, just kind of quickly run through a bunch of material. Now this is like a cover gig type of thing. Um, and there'll be different people that come up and play with the band. So um, I'm basically, you know, they sent me some songs that are typical songs. It's a lot of just playing it by ear, winging it, um, and, you know, learning the songs as you perform them on stage. This is something that's a little bit different of a gig, but definitely something that I feel comfortable doing. Um, but brushing off the dust on some of these songs for sure. Um, so I've been woodshedding through those um, just so I feel a little more comfortable on the other end of this weekend sitting in for that gig. So I don't know about you, but scrolling through Reverb is what I do in the way that I imagine other people scroll through Facebook or Instagram. Um, it really is just what consumes uh, almost all of my thoughts or, or gear, guitars, music, uh, things like that. Even as a kid, I, I remember scrolling through eBay trying to find you know ridiculous deals where I could scrounge up enough money to buy a guitar off eBay. I would look at Gruen Guitars website every day, see what different guitars they had in, see what things that they sold. Um, so let's just kind of go through uh, quickly first. I'm going to plug my shop. Um, I'm about to put a couple pedals on there now, but you can see I have the uh, HRM. Um, I've only used this for that video demo. Uh, the second time that I plugged it in uh, was just uh, last week when I did the shootout uh, for the drives uh, for this NAM gig. So um, I've only plugged it in a couple times, still have all the packaging and everything. So uh, make me an offer. I'll, I'll probably go down from where it is here. Uh, but let's kind of go through my feed here and see if we can just scroll and, and, and see what rabbit holes we can get into. Um, here we go. Latest from your feed. I'm used to scrolling on my phone here. So we've got uh, nothing too crazy that stands out. We've got a cool looking Ibanez. Um, I think these are the Jet King series. Um, this looks like it has P90s, but um, slightly different there. I don't know if you can see. We've got another close up here. Huh. Yeah, they've just kind of got a, uh, a black space in the middle um, where all the pull pieces are. It's like the cover doesn't actually cover the whole thing. Uh, it's slightly different. Uh, we've got a uh, custom shop here. Shout out to Andy Hicks, who's now a Fender custom shop master builder. He um, is the one who uh, sent me some behind the scenes photos of my Tyler before it left the shop. Um, We've got the uh, Catalan Bread Bell Epoch Deluxe. Um, just got the uh, external tap switch. These are incredible delays. Um, honestly, I could probably get away with just having a Bell Epoch with tap tempo. Um, they're they're really really that good. Um, we've got a bunch of new stuff on here, I'm trying to see if there's something uh, that we can dive into a little bit. Now this fuzz um, is a great fuzz, the, the Jackson Audio, it's modular, it looks like they have, um, I don't know actually how many uh, modules, um, this is every module, okay, I, th I thought that there was probably four or five. Um, 
My younger brother has a lot of Jackson Audio uh, gear, and I've played through this fuzz. Um, I'm not sure exactly um, which modules he has. I know he has two of them. So it looks like we have the Goat Head, um, the Modern Fuzz Deluxe, the Fuzz Page Mark II, uh, Fuzz Classic Modern Mark II. So those two are probably Tone Benders, Goat Head, I'm assuming is going to be um, a Big Muff Ram. The Modern Fuzz is probably just their modern take. I'm surprised that there is not a Fuzz Face, the Fuzz Classic. Okay, I'm sure that that is the Fuzz Face. Uh, but with the octave built in, man, it's so... Um, that and the 3-band EQ make it an incredibly usable Fuzz. Um, this does not look like it's a incredible price, uh, this particular listing, but um, this is a great fuzz to check out. Really, really versatile. Um, that EQ is powerful. Uh, oh man, this Crackle V makes me think of when I was younger. There is this shop, it's called Consignment Music in Memphis, so if you're in Memphis, uh, you'll probably know what I'm talking about. But it, uh, it was around the corner from where I lived growing up. And it was just this odd, really oddball consignment music store. They had a bunch of cheap garbage, um, and they had a few like really crazy expensive, um, weird Gibsons. They had a Les Paul Florentine that was semi hollow with the two F holes. This is well, well before um, they made that uh, Les Paul Memphis uh, with the semi hollow. This is this was like a Les Paul Supreme uh, level price of a guitar, but they had just a bunch of cheap crap too, and they had a vending machine. It was a string vending machine open 24-7, just kind of behind a cage, just like a drink vending machine, but they just had stocked it with strings. Um, there was a few times where I was on the way to Bill Street and uh, went by that vending machine to grab some strings for sure. Uh, but they had a Kramer, uh, I think it's the Vanguard, which is their take on this like, Rhodes Jackson style offset V and it was in crackle and I remember I scrounged up like 60 bucks snuck out of the house and put it on that way um, and uh, man I will never forget that guitar I actually have um, back here the body to just uh Flying V in this style. It's got, you know, a licensed Floyd Rose cheap thing. Um, I think I got this maybe off of Music Around or, or eBay or something. And uh, it hung on my wall in my bedroom. And the scarf joint, just under the tension of just being there on the wall, the scarf joint split, so it must have been a bad glue joint. Um, it's just a cheap knockoff, but really the reason why I have that is because of that Kramer with the crackle finish. Uh, let's see what else we can get into. Dean ML, I still, growing up being a Dimebag fan, still would, would love uh, to eventually get a really nice um, late 70s uh, original Dean ML. Uh, it's I mean, unplayably big uh, and pretty obnoxious for the style of music that I play, but uh, just to have one, um, that's something that I've always looked for. Um, let's see if there's anything else on these first couple pages. Um, looks like we have a 66 fuzz face. Um, man. This one is not nearly as beat up as, as so many of them that I've seen. I've played a few vintage fuzz faces, um, and a couple of them have been amazing. Um, I've also played some that, that are terrible, honestly. Uh, with vintage equipment, you just never know. Just because it's old um, and cool to own doesn't mean that it's very usable. So um, just keep that in mind as you, as you look you know, into vintage gear, especially pedals. Um, oh man, speaking of an HRM, uh, the J Rocket HRM, um, very, very different, I think, than the uh, Vertex Ultraphonics HRM. Um, 
they, they do pr very different things, even though they're, they're based off the same amp, really. Um, these pedals feel incredibly different. Um, the HRM by J Rocket has been featured recently on that pedal show a lot. And, um, you know, I, I would go to, to listen to the way Mick makes that pedal sound. It's pretty incredible. Um, you know, I was kind of hoping that a uh, cab would end up on here. Um, here we go. Here's just a brand new cab. But since uh, I, I can't recall his YouTube name now, um, we'll, we'll actually just look it up. I'll tell you that. Let's see if we can find it here. Jim Lil. That's who it is. Uh, he is a uh, musician in Nashville. I don't know him. I don't really know anything about him other than the controversial videos that he makes. Um, especially the one that says nothing matters except the pickups because he made an air guitar. Uh, I, would, I would watch that video here is uh, where does tone come from in electric guitar. Um, I, would, I would check this video out. You can see I was watching a warm off video there. Um, but this video, where does tone come from in a speaker cap? He does an incredibly in-depth video um, about speakers, um, what the baffle material is made out of, uh, how big or small the cab is. Um, he made <laughs> he made a cab. Um, there's kind of a spoiler at the end, but he made a cab out of just pink foam. Um, and it shockingly did not sound as different um, as you would hope. This is bad news for somebody like me who makes uh, really high-end um, custom one-off cabs. My wife and I have a cab company, Little John Cabs. Um, we're still working out all the details to get to get totally launched. Uh, but you've heard it in a ton of my videos, the Little John Cabs prototype number one. It's a Dumble style cab. And uh, I put a lot of work into making sure that it is you know shaped for the sound in in the way that I was looking for in a cab um, especially in a you know a higher end cab with the Dumble style look there's a certain type of response out of the speakers um, that you want and of course speakers matter really more than any of that I think it's uh, one of the most overlooked things is just changing your speakers out but we've gone into several rabbit holes here all this to say check out this video um, even though that's probably bad for business for me um, because charging a lot of money for a really um, you know nice handcrafted guitar cab uh, may not make you sound better <laughs> um, and this video kind of proves that but um, we'll have to see you know what the response is that let me know down in the comments below uh, what do you think about this video when you check it out and uh, if there's some specific reverb listings that you would like to check out this is something I do anyways uh, and not every vlog will include scrolling through reverb uh, but this one did so uh, it's just kind of a short vlog today we'll see you next week till next time I'm Colin.